Hello! Today I'm going to be looking at this little box of Rembrandt Artist watercolours. There are 12 half pans plus a sable brush. These are by Talons and this is their professional extra fine artist quality range, top of the line. So today I'll be opening the box, we'll swatch all the colours out and I'll do some paintings and hopefully we'll have a good time. So let's get into it! So I bought this box of paints a few months ago when I was in Greece, in Corfu to be precise, and it was the only box there on display. It looks pretty old. This is how it looked in the shop itself, and I think they had it on a discounted price because it was much cheaper than anything else I've ever seen by Rembrandt. So I don't know if you could still actually get this particular box. It may well be discontinued, but I'm pretty sure the paints inside are exactly the same. And if I can find the wooden box, I will link it in the description below. Otherwise, I will link maybe the newer versions down somewhere so you can check them out for yourself. It's just a standard 12 half pan set, I think. But let's get it open and check it out. Isn't that just a beautiful box? It's so lovely. Every time I start a video, one of these guys has to appear around my desk, and today is no exception. Ah, oh, mate, I'm going to have to move you. I cannot do my work while you're on my desk. All right, so he has been escorted off the premises for now. <laughs> So this is the wooden box that it comes in and it's got a slider here with a little ball bearing that clicks back into place when you put the thing back in but that comes out entirely and I have no idea what the wood is actually made of because it says nothing on the box it just says a wooden box but this is what the set looks like and they're all wrapped in their little papers so I'm going to have to undo those and here is the little number four sable brush. And if I flip it up the correct way, pure red sable. It's just a little travel brush. Here we go. There's of course one stray here, I think, but hopefully when I put this into water that will fix itself up. Now I shall take a look at one of these little paints if I can get it out. Because now I'm looking at it a bit closer, they do have little metal clips to hold them in. That's really great because I thought these were going to start shuffling around in this box once I took them out of the paper. The only not so great thing is it's really hard to get these out. Oh my gosh, I'm going to be here a little while I think. Okay, I've worked it out. Hooray! The whole thing comes out. That's it. So it's actually on a metal tray and then the wooden box is like that so it sits in there. That's pretty good actually. I like that design. But I hope it's going to sit in nicely again when I actually get it back in. That side does not want to come out. I finally got it. It took me ages. I had to sort of push these down and then just prise the whole thing out. They are meant to come out, I'm sure of it, because there's no adhesive in that. But that's such a beautifully made box. I really love this. I'm so glad I found it. I think the newer ones come in black boxes and I don't know if they're quite the same design as this. Rembrandt watercolour, I'm guessing that's the light fast rating, but they all seem to have three stars and I don't know if that means they're all light fast. <laughs> the permanent green, I guess, it's a series two. Look, there it is in English. <laughs> and do we have any other information? Not much. I'm not seeing pigment numbers anywhere. I found the pigment numbers. They are indeed on here. Well, kind of, because right at the bottom, can you see, it's kind of smudged off. So I might have to still look these up. Hopefully some of the others will be easier to read. There we go. I've popped them all out and I labelled them on the side just using a little Sharpie pen so I remember which colours are which. It's very much a traditional colour set, which I like because I don't have a lot of those lately. There is a split primary set on the top here, so there's two yellows, two reds and two blues in warm and cool shades. And then down the bottom are a couple of greens, there's three browns here and a Payne's Grey. I'm always so excited to have one of those in a set. They're sitting in here nicely too. There is a little bit of rattling and if I tip them upside down they will come out. <laughs> but. Just don't tip it upside down, I guess. This one's sitting in a little bit better than this top one. Here's the swatch chart that I drew up, and once I'd wet my brush, it had tapered into a fine point with all the hairs going in the same direction. I started by wetting the paper, and now we'll see how these paints activate in water. 
quite well, although I think they have a bit of a skin on top of them because they're brand new and it does take a little bit to get them to activate. The first colour here is Cadmium Yellow Lemon and this is a genuine Cadmium PY35. Next is Cadmium Yellow Deep, which is that same Cadmium Yellow but with some orange mixed in. I think that's a PO20. The paints didn't really run on the wet paper and that's probably because they are cadmiums which are heavy metals and they are therefore a heavy pigment that tends to settle to the bottom. Next up is cadmium red medium which is a PR108 and as with all heavy metals it pays to exercise a bit of caution by washing your hands afterwards and probably not drinking the paint water. I mean I don't think there's enough in there to be extremely toxic but I always like to take a little bit of care around cadmiums and cobalts. All paints really. Next up is Permanent Madder Lake Purple which is a mix of PR264 and PV19. It's a kind of magenta colour, maybe leaning towards the purple side but you can see it is a cooler red than that cadmium red. And now going to the two blues, there's Ultramarine Deep, which is the usual PB29. And there's a little bit of granulation, I think, but not a huge amount. I noticed that all of these paints are very finely milled and quite delicate. They're not hugely saturated like some other brands are, although they do come up quite well after a bit of time. This cobalt blue is quite pigmented. But they remind me a bit of Schmincke and to some extent Sennelier in that they're very delicate when you paint them out and they work really well in layers rather than all of the paint going down on one layer. But we'll come back to that when I'm actually doing some paintings. Next up is Permanent Green, a mix of PG7 and PY154. And this one's a nice bright green, but I really wish this next one was a dark green. It is genuine Viridian PG18 and it does not like to be reactivated in water. Water. It has a very low tinting strength and I was just not able to build this colour up at all. This is my least favourite colour in the set. I could also feel the binder sitting on top of the paint as well and it wouldn't reactivate properly. Yellow ochre on the other hand re-wet nicely. That's PY43 and PY42 interestingly enough. And next is Burnt Sienna which is a traditional PBR7. As I said earlier this is a pretty traditional set and the pigments are pretty much what I'd expect in a set like this. Next up is Sepia, a mix of PBK7 and PR101. I really like this mix. It's a lovely dark brown, really rich and heavily pigmented, which is what I like because then you can actually get some dark shadow colours. And next is Payne's Grey. This is also a nice one, PBK6 and PB15. So overall it's looking like a pretty decent set of colours, quite useful, except for that Viridian, which is just far too light and pretty much useless in my opinion. Let me know in the comments if you like Viridian. I did try to do a second layer, but you can probably see how gluggy it is and that's the binder. It just would not work and I really don't like it. But while I was letting everything dry, I thought I'd stick on the little labels from the colours. I'm just using double-sided tape on the backs of them. A little bit of a souvenir rather than chucking them in the bin. And I think they look quite cute in the sketchbook, just laid underneath the swatch of everything as well. My guess is that because they all have three little pluses on them that they are all the highest level rating of light fastness. I would say so for these colours, what do you think? And once I'd finished sticking those on, I penciled in some lettering, copied from a lettering book I've been using, and now I'm just inking it over just to make it look pretty because I had a space down the bottom and I couldn't think of what to paint there. I've been having fun incorporating lettering into my sketchbook, as you probably noticed if you've been watching my previous videos. It just adds something different to the page and it's kind of arty in its own way. There is a definite art to lettering and I have yet to master it, I'm afraid. I'm getting better at it though, I think. Here are the colours once they've dried out. I like them all except for the Viridian Green. That one is just never going to be a favourite for me. Give me Thalo Green Blue Shade any day. But otherwise they're very nice. There's a little bit of granulation going on in this Ultramarine and maybe in the Cobalt. It's hard to tell. They look pretty smooth to me otherwise. And I do have a little bit of backwash going on because I had a lot of water on them. And this paper doesn't seem to absorb quite as well as the Etcher paper did when it was good, so I'm still getting used to this slightly different paper and how it behaves. Anyway, I guess I'll do a painting now. 
I was struggling a bit this day thinking of what to do to fill up the rest of this page so I grabbed out a couple of coal erase pencils and I'm drawing in a daffodil from a photo I took recently. Daffodils are surprisingly difficult to draw and I don't think that mine turned out quite as well as the photograph but it's not too bad I suppose. But anyway I'm using that cadmium yellow lemon to paint in the majority of the petals on the daffodil and then I'll use some of the cadmium yellow deep to paint in the shadow areas where the petals are overlapping. I was mixing my paints on a small ceramic dish because of course there's no mixing area in the box itself. Which is maybe its biggest limitation but I'm not too bothered because it's not that difficult to get a separate dish out. As I mentioned during the swatching these paints were very delicate when painting them out and I did need to go over them with layers just to get a deeper colour. The biggest issue I had was struggling to get a really dark green and I was trying to mix in the permanent green with Payne's grey. It worked a little bit but not as well as I would have liked. I'm just hopeless at mixing a dark green for some reason. Even if I try mixing blues and yellows it just never quite works. It's the same issue that I've had in other videos reviewing different sets. If there's not a dark green I really struggle. I like to have a convenience dark green on a palette. That Viridian just needs to go and I would happily replace that with a dark green which I probably will do. Now I'm painting in a background and here's the other observation that I'm going to make about the new sketchbook I'm using. It's a Hannah Mueller 100% cotton sketchbook and the paper does not really like a lot of water. You can see how the paint has cauliflowered on the little swatches in particular Payne's Grey Sepia and Permanent Matter. This is where I'd added quite a lot of water and it really doesn't blend into the paper as nicely as I would expect for a cotton. So that's kind of annoying. I've got a whole sketchbook. I'm just going to have to change my behavior when it comes to painting backgrounds. I mean the paint still disperses out into it. It's just that it doesn't like a lot of water. It will start to cauliflower. So that's something to bear in mind. I know a couple of other people have mentioned this to me with their experiences too and I'm most definitely having the same issue. I've got a new learning curve here because it's behaving so completely differently to the etcher paper which was a lot more forgiving when it came to really wet washes. I was trying to deepen the background to make it contrast with the bright flower and it wasn't working super well. So very briefly you'll see my Sennelier palette with the forest green which is a really dark green in the set and I did use a little bit because it was just driving me nuts. Sennelier's forest green is one of my absolute favorite dark greens and I figured I'd just incorporate a little bit regardless of whether that's considered cheating because it's outside of the Rembrandt set. Whatever. I do whatever it takes to get the job done. So I'm going over the background again once it had fully dried to get some deeper blues going on there and you can probably see up the top where there's a bit too much water how it is starting to do a little bit of cauliflowering in that background. Annoying! But once I'd let it all dry I felt like it needed some white on there so I'm going for some bleed proof white. I had to try to white pen but it just wasn't white enough for what I needed and this bleed proof white ink is always really great. I wasn't super happy with the painting in it, it felt very flat and so just adding some white dots everywhere just really lifted it and I felt a lot better about the picture. I've tried painting daffodils a few times and I'm still not very good at it but here's the finished page. I thought I would do a whole page spread so I'm actually going to do a second picture and I'd seen this photo of a cute dog and I thought this could be fun to paint using that lovely sepia brown colour. I'm just using a cheap old graphite pencil here to draw it out because I wasn't in the mood to use colored pencils or anything and I felt like I had rushed the daffodil a bit which is why I wasn't happy with it so I did take my time with this particular drawing to make it a bit more detailed and to get the proportions as correct as I could. I think the mouth and chin area gave me the most grief but I got there eventually after a few goes and I think the drawing actually turned out pretty well. I think I mentioned recently that I've been feeling a little bit off my game when it comes to painting like things haven't been turning out as nicely as I would like them to so I think it's just a matter of going back to basics and really focusing on drawing again and getting proportions right and then going back into the painting. That's what I really tried to do with this particular painting and I'm using the earthy colors in the Rembrandt set 
in particular the sepia, yellow ochre, and I think a small amount of burnt sienna as well. I think this paper responds a lot better to more precise paintings like this rather than heavy water washes. It just doesn't seem to like those, so I think I'll have to just try and do more paintings like this, which are more detailed using a smaller brush, and I was using the brush that came in the Rembrandt set. It was actually very nice. I do like a red sable, and it held quite a lot of paint even though it's a relatively small brush. The plastic handle is a bit flimsy though, I would prefer it if it was metal, or at least wood, that would be nice too. But I may do with this one. I also used a couple of larger brushes in a few places. I quite enjoyed using the Rembrandt paints, and I really do love that wooden box that they come in, it's such a pretty little set. The paints themselves are definitely professional quality, they're very finely milled. And these earth colours were particularly lovely in the set. I think this would be useful for travelling and plain air painting. The only one that I would change out is that Viridian. If you like Viridian, that's totally fine. I am just not a fan. I never have been. It's just too light for my liking. I like to have a nice deep paint that I can water down and make dilute if I want to. But it's impossible to make a low tinting strength paint become more saturated. So if anything, I'd swap it out maybe for Thalo Green Blue Shade, or I'd just go for that dark green. I think there's a Hooker's Green or something in the Rembrandt set. Maybe I'll take a look at that and see if I can find a pan. I did a very light background for this particular painting because I decided I didn't want it to be brown like it was in the photo. I thought it would take away from the dog too much. So I've just left it very subtle, and it's really just a mix of the leftover paints that were on the palette, the palette mud, so to speak. I spent some more time going over the whole dog picture, just putting in some details in the fur and also some more shadows. I think taking my time on this painting really paid off, and I'm very happy with the results. This feels like the most accurate drawing that I've done for a while, and I would like to do some more practice, because that always just makes me feel a lot better, and I'm able to get better artworks in the end. I need to tell myself to stop rushing, because I have a tendency to do that when I'm filming videos. But here's the finished painting. I'm super happy with this one. I think it looks really cute. So here we go, here's what I got done today. I don't actually mind how this page turned out in the end. I like the watercolours, I'm glad I put the little sticky things on. And the daffodil is looking a bit better now, I've added some white in there just to make it stand out a bit. It's not the best thing in the world, but the colours have actually come out really well. I'm glad I added the Sennelier Forest Green though. This set is just missing that dark green, it is the one downfall of it. If I was to change anything, I'm going to probably take out that Viridian because it's pretty much useless. I like how the dog came out, and you can see it's just got a very, very subtle background going on there. And I kind of want something up in this corner, but I don't know what, so I think I'm going to leave it for now and maybe come back to this at some point. I just figured that it's probably best to leave it simple today. <laughs> and that sepia is probably my favourite in the set. It's a really lovely chocolatey brown. It's wonderfully deep. So at least some colours are deep. It's just that Viridian lets the set down for sure. The brush is pretty good, it's tapered to a nice point now that it's wet and all of the hairs are going in the same direction now. It did fall out into the water dish once when I was using it, which is kind of annoying. This bit came off from here and I had to fish around for it, but otherwise the brush seems to be pretty good and I have no complaints with that. And the box itself is absolutely beautiful. I love the wood and I think it's a really pretty set. Well, thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed the video and I hope it was helpful. I did enjoy the Rembrandt paints this time around more than I did in my previous video and I'm glad about that. They're still not my favourite though. I have to admit I much prefer the Sennelier but I have been won over I think by some of these darker colours so that's a win. If you enjoyed this video I'd really appreciate a thumbs up and you might want to click that subscribe button for more videos and up in this corner is my previous Rembrandt video with the tube so you can see what I did in that and I'm sure I'll have another video over on this side for you to look at as well. I hope you're having a great day and I'll see you all again really soon in my next video. Swatch you later. Bye!